Hello, today I'm going to talk about a very special poet in the Ukrainian literature and read you a short part of my translations from his poetry into English. The poet's name is Grigory Skavarada. He lived in the 18th century and he had a powerful influence on the Ukrainian literature. Someone wrote in his memoirs about Skavarada that he spoke Ukrainian language in daily life. However, he wrote in the literary language, in the high style, which was at that time considered the language of poetry, the language of philosophical and theological works. Grigory Skovrada had a great talent for music and poetry. He also had a strong voice. From an early age, he learned to play different musical instruments. He composed music to his own poems. He played musical instruments and he sang. Grigory Skovrada learned Greek, Hebrew, Latin and other languages. When he was 30 years old, after obtaining a profound knowledge of antique and new European philosophers, he began a deep study of the Bible. He would end many of his literary works with the words Grigory Skovrada, the lover of the Holy Bible. Skovrada traveled in Europe he visited Austria, Hungary, Slovakia and Poland. He met with scholars and discussed philosophy with them. After returning to his homeland, Skovarada worked as a teacher for a while and then became a wandering philosopher, pedagogue and enlightener. Bishops called him to monasteries, governors called him to the government, even the empress of the Russian Empire, Catherine II, invited him to service at her court. But Skovarada had made up his mind. He rejected all invitations. Until the end of his life, he lived as a wandering philosopher, spending time with ordinary people. As I already mentioned, Skovarada knew ancient Greek and Latin languages. He also knew antique philosophy and poetry, and he knew European philosophy of Renaissance. Nevertheless, the philosopher did not embrace the ideas of Renaissance. The Bible and pagan philosophy somehow coexisted, harmoniously coexisted in Skovorodá's philosophy. Here is what he wrote in one of his works. Do not confine the knowledge of God to the narrow area of Palestine. God is reached by the Magi, that is the philosophers, as well. There is one God of Jews and Gentiles, and there is one wisdom. Religious narrow-mindedness and bigotry was foreign to Skovoroda. Here is what he wrote. Superstitious people are upset by someone praying to the south instead of praying to the east, like themselves. Some are angry at baptism by immersion, while others are maddened by water poured over the baptized person. Some curse leaven, while others curse unleavened bread. As if God were cruel and hostile to people for such minor reasons, and in all these nonsenses they run to their patroness, the Bible, and she is corrupted by the obstinate. Here Skovarada is dealing with the problem of proofreading. The Bible should be understood as one text, as one whole message that you cannot divide. And you can understand a text of the Bible only in the context of the whole book. So we can see that Skovarada was a pretty universal person with the thoughts that would accept different ideas of the ancient Greek philosophy and the Bible. Uh, but all this was joined with the most important thing, his love for God and love for people. Despite this universal nature of Skvorodá's work, they often contain elements of Ukrainian national culture and folklore. We can find sayings, proverbs, idioms, songs, Ukrainian national songs in Skvorodá's works. One of his poems actually was adapted by people from his high style language to the folk language and became like a folk song. Всякому городу нравы права, всяко имеет свой ум голова. The literal translation of these lines is every town has its own way. Everyone has their own ideas. I'm going to read you my translation of this poem's first and last stanzas. The poem has five stanzas, and the first stanza goes like this. Cities have different customs and laws, 
People have different merits and flaws. Everyone's heart has its favorite mood. Everyone's palate likes different food. But as for me, with one thought I'm obsessed. It's on my mind and it gives me no rest. The next three stanzas continue in the same way. He describes people who have some goals, people who are busy about doing something in this world in order to obtain something temporary. The next three stanzas also end with the same two lines. But as for me, with one thought I'm obsessed. It's on my mind and it gives me no rest. So it keeps the reader wondering, what is this one thought that Rihori Skvorda is obsessed with? What's on his mind? What gives him no rest? The answer is found in the last stanza. Horrible death wields its scythe in the air. Even the king's life it shall not spare. To it both peasants and rulers fall prey. It ruins all as a fire burning hay. Its deadly blade who will not fear? Those whose consciences are crystal clear. Simple message, a very powerful message. So this is one of the most famous poems by Grigory Skovorodá. In view of his significant role, some researchers even came to consider Grigory Skovorodá the greatest Christian philosopher after the early church fathers. In my next video, I'm going to share my English translation of another poem by Grigory Skovorodá from this collection of the Garden of Divine Songs. If you like this video, you can put likes and subscribe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.